Okay. Amen. I am excited to finish on the series. I know that uh, on the topic living in the combat zone, uh, as far as the series of messages that we have considered, I think this is the toughest. It is because I know that uh, the word of the enemy is real. And uh, it's not also, uh, not only that he's working with me, and I know that he's working with our families, individuals, and uh, children. And um, so it is a, uh, an exciting thing. But uh, let's not be intimidated with the word of the enemy. Okay? Uh, not only does he escape, he intimidates. And so, uh, okay, uh, can you help us uh, in the monitor? I hope that you have not forgotten uh, all of those principles and uh, if you have some questions uh, about the, uh, the decisions we are going to make in living in the combat zone in order that we as believers uh, will be able to live as winners. Okay, I'll try to just stand here. Now in two weeks, I know that Andy will be celebrating her first birthday. Mm. Amen. We can help but thank God, thank God for keeping her alive. Mm. We thank God for uh, even having a strong conviction at that day that she is going to bring her to the hospital. We thank God for the doctor on duty at the emergency care who took the spinal tap as necessary step to determine the cause of the high fever. About two months ago, a news was relayed to us by one of our sisters in the Lord that uh, in the same way that a child has been brought to the hospital infected by a deadly virus called the meningitis. While the child was having high fever, vomiting, her parents brought her to the emergency of course, she was given a medicine to relieve the fever, and then they were sent home. The following day, the child was brought back again to the hospital, and this time the doctor did the testing, and the attack of the virus was getting severe. So the child was brought to the children's hospital in Oakland, but it was already dead late when she died. The difference between these two cases is knowledge of the sickness and uh, it's about on the emergency the urgency of it but the medical people who attended to this child who died when she was brought to the hospital for the first time knew that this child's case was severe and deadly she would have been given the right treatment and was not sent home if they did not have the right care for it she would have been referred early to the hospital in Oakland or another facility that would do it. The same thing is true spiritually. If we are only aware and know of the spiritual battle we are in, we will know how to fight the battle and win over the schemes of our spiritual enemy, the devil and his spiritual forces. Sometimes we fail to acknowledge that the enemy will insinuate in our, in our mind. If you remember that when Judas sold the Lord Jesus Christ for 30 pieces of silver, the devil insinuated in his mind. He was ignorant of the work of the enemy. So because we are ignorant of it, we think that we are fighting against flesh and blood. As such, we become a victim and pray of the enemy. So today we will continue in our series of the message living in the combat zone under the same thing. But before we go, why don't we once again declare before the principalities and powers nothing? I think they need to hear that. We need to lift up our Bibles. Now we the children of God should lift up our Bibles. Have you heard those uh, militants in Iraq? Have you seen them, the picture? In Iraq or in Afghanistan? What do they do with their arms? 
Do they put it down? No! They lift it up? I think we do the same way. Come on. You know, the enemy is watching you who, who is not uh, brave enough to lift the Bible. Huh. Don't be intimidated by it or don't be scared by it. Okay, let's lift it up. Follow me. This is my Bible. This is God's Word. I am what it says I am. I am a child of God. The enemy is scared of me. I have what I am going to have. I have eternal life. I have the Holy Spirit who is an payment of my eternal life. He is my strength, my power in the loop. I boldly confess that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive to receive God's rebuke, instruction, correction, inspiration for me today. Amen. So don't expect that each time I'm going to preach, it is just an inspiration for you. Expect that I'm going to rebuke. That is being faithful with the Word of God. You know, in many churches today, they don't rebuke people. They don't correct. They just inspire. They don't preach about sin. They just preach about the grace of God. But you know what? The grace of God is useless when you're talking about sin. And so today, we are going to continue on the series of the message, Living in the Combat Zone under the theme, Decisions to Make in Living God's Way. I think we need to do that. And we often make wrong decisions. I don't know if uh, you remember what Hillary Clinton said about wrong decisions and a mistake. I don't know the difference of that. Does it? <laughs> Just like uh, President Clinton, it depends on what your meaning of is. All right. The last 22 decisions. Now, this is not a repetition, but a repetition is good. Correct? Amen. I really believe that. If you want a um, verse to stick in your mind, keep on saying it over and over again. If you don't memorize it, read it over and over again, then later on it will stick into your mind and you will be able to memorize them. So the last 22 decisions I shared to you were, and uh, I was looking at it Brother Dave, whether you said there is a word that I missed, okay? Now I review this. Number one is accept your lot. There's no use comparing it with others. You will be defeated if you are going to compare with others just like, you know, Peter and John. He said, Peter said, what about him? So accept your lot. Okay? God has placed you in different places in the body. How about be? Be. Believe. Believe that God is faithful. How about see? Confess. Confess that what? God is sovereign. God is not making a mistake in placing you where you are. How about D? Decide to be grateful. Wow, thank you. I'm encouraged. How about E? Entrust all your fears to the Almighty. That's why we are being truly by faith. And we don't know everything that what comes next. We don't know what tomorrow lies. How about F? Faithfully execute, Faithfully execute God's orders. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to us. But it does not to God. And you must have to trust Him. How about G? Gracefully move on. Gracefully move on in life. Oh, thank you. How about H? How we perform your duties. Wow, I'm curious with you. Okay, and I? Incorporate delays in your plan. Incorporate delays in your plan, and that includes detours and distractions. I think it's very real in our spiritual struggles today. You know, there are some distractions. And it depends upon you whether you will be distracted and the focus will be to someone else rather than on the work of the Spirit. That's why it will be very easy to get the focus on someone else. You know, until today, you know, President Obama still blaming Bush. Eight years, almost passed. Detours, distractions, 
delay. Just go. If there are things doesn't make sense, just go. If there are distractions, just move on. And let God. How about J? Hey, just, just go and let God. Just go and let God. Okay, that's J. Okay, how about the next? Okay, no, that all is well. You know, this is very meaningful because this is a Sunday that I preach and the following day, Andy, instructed me in Japanese. J A L. 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 Listen to God for faith and action. Listen to God. You know, in these busy times, we have less time to listen to God. In fact, we keep on talking to God. I said, God, I have only these few words. What the prayer request is the same thing as yesterday. <laughs> How about JTL? Master. Master your strategy in life. Oh, young people. Marriage. <laughs> about marriage. <laughs> about dating. You have to have a strategy. Moments. Oh, boy. Money, let God, let them work in your life. Follow God's word. That's part of the strategy. Life is not hit or miss. If you are going to do that, sorry for you. God will not spare you from the result of mistakes and wrong decisions in life. And, and, never ignore the Lord's promptings. If there's some convictions and teachings through your parents or spiritual, uh, spiritually, uh, People, listen to them, do not ignore. How about F N O? Obey the Lord's instruction at all costs. Don't just choose what you want. Did you hear me? Do not say, this is not good for me. It's good for everyone. Number 16. Pray in the Spirit. Elephant O P and then Q. Go and apply Wait, go and apply. Okay, go and apply. If just correctly. How about QR? Resist. Every temptation. Wow. Resist every temptation to win. You know there are many distractions that will come on the way. You wanted to, young people, you wanted to finish college, there are a lot of distractions for you. One of, one of the things here in, in America that you are distracted with is you work. I can work now. I can get a salary, so never mind. I can live independently. Well, yeah, you're distracting yourself. It should have been easier for you, right? It should have been easier for you to stay with your mom, okay? Because you don't want to listen to distractions. You don't want to live on your own. I can pay my insurance, but, but you know what? It's just a waste of your time. You are supposed to have a free housing. If I work so hard in order to pay. That is a temptation for you. You are making your life harder. How about you are? S. Sanity. Sanity. You are so good. Okay, keep your sanity. You know why it is mentioned in the scripture? It is because if you are going to listen, you will be out of reason. You will become irreasonable. How about R.S. T. Tell the truth or truthfulness that you're being practiced. You know, one of the worst things that happened to you is that you deceive yourself. You believe yourself with a lie. Hmm. And who is the author of lies? Satan. It's Satan. How about R S T? You. You. United. United with the team. Why? Because we are part of the body of Jesus Christ. And yeah, you have your own placement. Okay, it's the you. B. Violate not the commands of the Lord or violate not the rules of the game. Why? Because the devil don't consider any rules. But with God, there should be. There is number one, there is number two, there is number three, and there should be order in God's words. R-E-C-U-B, and then the next. 
Okay, this is where we are going to work on today. It is W. What do you think is the one? You think X. Workout. 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 Yeah, because you said it. What <laughs> 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 do you want to do? Thank you. Thank you. You have a birthday. Okay. Now here is this. And it is you. It is work out. Work out to stay fit. Now in the body of Jesus Christ, there is no one who is a misfit. Could you say amen? Because God never mistakes in placing you where you are in the body of Jesus Christ. However, you become ineffective in the place where God places you. It is because you never work out. You know, some people that are left-handed, some people are right-handed. Now most of the time, it is because we are right-handed, we keep on using the right hand to the point that our left hand is so weak. And I think it is only Mari Pacquiao who made that uh, expertise in having the right and the left hand almost at the same strength. That makes him a champion. So work out to stay fit. It's a good message, right? And I think there is the soldier who is not fit enough. If they are not fit enough, they should go to the veterans hospital. But you have a problem because if you take one year, people you will be checked out. Check out. Now listen to this. Our fight is already won. Our enemy is already defeated. Our salvation is secure. But we have to work it out. In living as leaders. Mm -hmm. Apostle Paul said to the Philippians, he said, Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You are saved by grace. You are a child of God, but you have to live it out. Now remember, he said, With fear and trembling. It is not just easy, easy. It is not just like going to church and then after that, go home. It's not even just saying, you know, the message is good, Pastor, and then after that, you remain the same. You know, it was a word given to crucial time to the Christian believers in Philippi and to the diaspora. Diaspora means that in the dispersed believers in Asia Minor. I strongly believe that it's the same word as instruction for you and me to live out our faith and living in victory. The need to work out is clearly implied in our passage here in Ephesians chapter 6. Would you say amen? amen? Consider the commands given. He said to be strong in the Lord and to take our stand against the devil's schemes. When you said to be strong, you can never become strong, you know, on just lying down all the time. You need to eat, of course. But if you keep on eating without exercise, I think uh, only pigs do that because it's ready to be sold. And he said you need to take your stand against the devil's schemes. Apostle did emphasize to be super strong, not relying on our own strength. But we are going to have the power in the Lord. When you say power in the Lord, he's talking about the power that has been demonstrated in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When he said to stand, you notice if you begin to look at the verse, he said, not just stand. In the NIV, he said, stand firmly. Would you say amen? amen? Because there are many people who are standing, but it is not firm. They are wobbly. They are just like drunk. It is like an athlete having a muscle that is firm. I don't have a muscle. If I have the muscle, it's still very soft. 
But it is like a gymnast coming down from the rope with a triple twist and lands with his feet on the floor that is firm. I think Anna understood that. <laughs> Which is supposed to the rope and then turn and then up to the system. The feet is still firm. He didn't say, she, she didn't get to say, you're not a wiener like that, you're a loser. <laughs> Correct, Anna, right? <laughs> to, 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 be, to be champion is your feet. <laughs> the need to work out is in the use of the full armor. Are you with me? It is not the incomplete, it is complete. You know what it means if you're going to imagine that and look at the internet, how, for me, how cumbersome, how difficult it is. Imagine clearly how a world soldier would be able to engage in the fight with his heavy equipment. I just estimated that, that the kilo of belt, a kilo of belt, five kilos of shield, because it is made of metal, and then two kilos of spear in his right hand, Five kilos of breastplate, two kilos of boots, two kilos of helmet that's made of metal, two kilos of metal shirt, if you know like a metal skirt, and so forth. So when you begin to think of this Roman soldier, he is wearing a very heavy equipment and cumbersome. Now without getting used to it, there is no way you can be designed to move quickly and win. A Roman soldier engaged in a fight need to get used to this heavy uh, armor and engage in a fight with ease. Anyone who or not would be addicted. If you remember King David, King David, he was young at the time when he fought Goliath. If you remember that he was put on an, uh, an armor and a sword and the, the sword and the armor is bigger than him, and he said, no, there's no way I could defeat Goliath with that. You know, just give me something, you know, that I am expert to do it, and it is a sling. And when we are going to do that with the provision that God gives, I do believe that this armor is so beautiful, and it is not cumbersome. And it has been designed by God for us to become winners. From our own U.S. Army veteran who served in Afghanistan six years ago, this is what he said about the weight that a soldier will carry, a U.S. Army. It depends on the type of mission. I carried about 90 pounds of stuff in Afghanistan with the second airborne, <coughs> mainly in my rucksack, and that was dropped off at the patrol base unless we flew in, if we were close enough to the objective or were engaged by the enemy, normally we carried assault packs which weighed about 50 pounds with all the ammo, batteries, water, and excess we needed to fight and survive. Oh yeah, he said, plus the body armor. With this and helmets weight to a constant, uh, constant and came in around 40 pounds of extra pound. So 50 plus 40 is 90. Now he said, he said, and it is an extra fun. <laughs> he said, and in the weather, extreme cold and heat, and the altitude to boot, <coughs> and some of you have to fight, this is weight you can't see. So the weight in the body and about in the spirit. And unless you are ready, I'm going to tell you that you will be a casual. So roughly, I put in there, roughly the weight a soldier always carry is more than 100 pounds. If you don't want to, don't be an army if you don't want to carry 100 pounds. If you are not ready to carry 100 pounds jogging or climbing rocks, mountains, Hiking, don't go into the U.S. Army. Mind you, when it is good to go to the U.S. Army, serve for four years, one term, and then go to school. It will help you, but um, it's not easy. Four years is not easy. I think it's easier to be in the Navy, right, Dave? 
because you will just jump back, you know, on that uh, boat. That you will be like sardines when you are to sleep. <laughs> In one boat, there are 5,000 of you over there. According to our text, we need to get used to the use of our spiritual armor to a point that we arrive at having them as part of our nature and our character. It's no longer, we're not bothered anymore. It's already a part of our life. They become a normal thing in us rather than a hard effort to exert. How could you go into the bottle and say, ugh, ugh, and then you are, what are you doing? Since what you're carrying is very heavy, and then you have an armor light that you are pulling instead of holding ready, just pulling it. The minor here is this. There are seven of them listed, and we are going to go through as we can. One is the belt of truth. Now mind you, in a Roman, a Roman soldier, the belt was used to guard the soldier and to hold other equipment in place. They are strong, sturdy, and heavy to serve its purpose. Why? Because there are other things that are other equipments that are attached to your belt. They were never meant to be a decoration. <laughs> just like many of our belts. They are just decorations. Maluang pa. And now it's loose. Why? It's because decoration. It's fancy. And sometimes, you know, we have a big belt. It is to suppress our big belly. Malaki kasi siya eh. Kaya kailangan ng suppresso. Now, as a Roman soldier need to be girded with a sturdy, strong and heavy belt, even so we as Christian believers need to be girded and heavy of a girded and something is lacking there. To be girded and heavy in living in the truth and telling the truth. In other words, we are going to be uh, having a strong emphasis on it. It is a uh, it is a culture that we are not going to take it for granted because it is there that we are going to stand on. Example, Jesus is the truth. There's no compromise to it. There's no argument. There's no argument that you are in Jesus. You are part of the body. There's no argument and you are not going to say for that that you are saved by grace. You cannot just say, I'll step on the other side of the pendulum and then I'm going to stay. You know, it's okay. I'm going to stay in sin and the other one stay in righteousness. You cannot live in that way. That is our conditional spiritual armor. We need to be girded and grounded in it. We also need to develop the quality of telling the truth. We have to put this in our minds that the devil in the very beginning used lies to them as a funny. Where God, now listen to this, where God put a period, Satan put a question mark to show doubt that God is true in his word. Or God, God is not true in his word. Now one of the qualities here in, the, in America, especially to those who are in authorities, is that uh, they, they stand for uh, the truth and they don't compromise. Uh, if a highway patrol will, will stop you and he knows that there is a violation, he will not hesitate to give you a ticket. He will not. Number two, breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of Roman soldier was to protect the heart being pierced with a spear and sword by the enemy. King Solomon called this heart a breastplate of righteousness, which uh, says about the heart. This is the wellspring of life where issues come from. That if you have a problem in our Christian life, it's not just in your mind, it springs from the heart. Righteousness will stand fast when the, on the day when the day of evil comes. When we are doing right, we will not be caught of God. We will not be blessing, mumbling, and trembling for fear of being caught with our lives. Or with our lives. King David compared a righteous man to a tree that is planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. It's lived at the weather, but well, whatever he does prospers. 
Number three, fit, fitted with readiness. It will be very hard to have a soldier that, are, that is not ready for battle. And a soldier who is not ready to take up his gun. They will have the armor, but they will just lay down with them. In Mindanao, during the time of the uh, APA and also the time of the, uh, the black shirts, so there are wars between NPA and also in the Muslims, the Muslims and the Christians. And that was the time when President Marcos sent the battalions of soldiers in Mindanao. And there are many soldiers that have been assigned in, uh, in lonely and deserted places. And uh, to you, Brother Phil, do you remember it is uh, that road, you know, from the Malinao going to Buo, you know, where there are a lot of cars in the area where uh, you go to Lakewood, and there's forest over there. And one of the things that is so funny to look at is that this military people from the north, you know, married ladies from the south. So they were married in their detachment, and so what they have been, you will be able to see it's very funny. It is because the soldier is the one carrying the big palangana. Huh? Laundry basket, you know, and... Uh, they're the ones carrying, you know, and the wife who is pregnant is the one carrying the gun, Paloy. <laughs> That's very funny. Now they are not ready to fight. They are ready to hide. Some do not follow the rules. You know, they are drunk during the night. And during the day in their post, they are sleeping. So their enemy is trying, you know, to crawl and just get their arms. By the time they're awake, their guns are all not, not there anymore. Serious. To a soldier, they do a drill every morning, every day, to keep them alert and ready. Now you probably heard that and uh, being the ho, 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 ho. That in the morning, you'll be able to, four o'clock in the morning, you'll be able to hear the... One, two, three, and then they follow the commander and uh, it takes them one hour to two hours is just doing the drill. The PMT before, before the ROTC in high in college, in high school, we do we do the one. Did you do that once when you were in high school? Where you are going to have a drill, you know, and uh, early in the morning you are going to jump, you know, all the whole battalion. You know, we are going to jog in the city before we go to class. Now, in our first ministry assignment in Mindanao, Philippines, the church was beside the military camp. A siren would sound and the soldiers would run to their quarter from wherever they are and live whatever they were doing. Take their arms and pull in line. But it's only a drill. In the Church of Jesus Christ, many Christian believers are not ready to engage in the spiritual fight, much less of being aware that they are on the spiritual side. So when the evil day comes, they fight the literal people with flesh and blood, and as a result, the church is torn and broken, and it is stable here. It's broken. You know what? What are you even in our homes? The lack of training for our children and laziness boils down to a spiritual fight. It becomes an issue that the devil would use to destroy our testimony as a Christian family. So often, this is a common issue on air. Sorry to mention this again. This is a common issue on air between children with their family and in laws living together. Is that true? Say true. It happens almost everywhere we see. Many parents are failing to get their children ready for life. Especially when the Lula and the Lolo are there. Because they are the ones spoiling them. Kawawa naman sila. So oftentimes the Lolo and the Lula become the liberal instead of the kings and the queens being served in their old age. So what happened with the grandkids? They are just sitting down, watching television, 
doing their videos, even though the table is supposed to be prepared, they are going to wait until the time they will be served. Knock your head. Parents, knock their heads. Lola and Lolo, tell your apo, apo, it's my time to sit down. I did the cooking. It's time for you to set the table. Another one will wash the plate. Whoa. Bakit kayo tumatahin eh? Sino ba pinapatamahan ko? Tayong lahat. Last week to our apo, our grandkids were with us. The younger had her own TV show. The TV show. And the older had hers. After a time, the older said, they said, Lolo, can I have my own show? And I said, oh, sure. After all, I love you. Okay. So then it was a last time. I was preparing a food. And she was so engrossed in her TV show. I told her to turn off. Okay, turn off the television. Your show. Get up. And prepare the table. She's too dumb. She was not up. <laughs> I said, you have to do it. I cook, I prepare, and it's up for you. You help Lolo prepare. Now here is the mat, table mat, okay? You know, it was a good time, but, but you know what? She gave me the teaspoon rather than the tablespoon. <laughs> it's fine, but, but it's a good room, but it could work. She started it. And then I asked her, he said, are you doing that at home? No. Okay, when you go home, start doing that, and then mommy will be very happy. She came back to the house, did you do what I told you to do? No. <laughs> when are you going to train your children? If you are not going to do that in this literal world, spiritually it will be carried through. Well, after all, Pastor, never mind. In Costco, everything is microwavable. <laughs> That's what I do. Almost every week, I go there and have it. I don't have to cook. I just go there and... By the time I get to my house, I'm from <laughs> Number four, see the fact. Roman children and Christians are daily the use of the heavy shield to protect himself from the fiery darts of the enemy. Faith is our shield from conquering the darts and doubts of the enemy thrown to us. Would you say amen? amen? We were saved by faith. We are taught to live by faith. It's step of the way we move on in our Christian life trusting in God. We need to keep on believing that God is true to His word and faithful in His promises. Would you say Amen. amen. When the evil day comes to our lives, we must believe that God will show up at the right time. And listen to this, even if God does not show up to rescue us on the evil day, we must stand firm like Prophet Daniel at the dungeon believing that God exists and that there rewards those who believe in Him. Number five, helmet of salvation. A Roman soldier's helmet is heavy. He has to get used to it. One of the things I do not to ride on motorcycles because of the helmet. I like to ride motorcycles. But I don't want to receive a ticket here anyway, so I have to wear a helmet. In the Philippines, you don't have to wear a helmet. Let your hair fly. It is an equipment that need to keep his head from being pierced by the sword and hit by the spear. The head is the place Okay, listen to this. The head is the place where the strategy is stored. Because life or battle is not hit or miss. If you want it to be a champion, you even have to study your opponent very well. Do you think so? Just like Manny Pacquiao. Any enemy he has, you know, any opponent, he is going to study his things months and months. And then he's going to train for months and months. 
Now listen to this. Once the head is damaged, the fight is done. That's why keep your sanity. Spiritually, our salvation is critical provision we have to protect. Our sanity is kept there in the Word of God. It tells us the reason for our spiritual struggle. It is the foundation of, of our moral, moral, and living truthful and right. It tells us that we are on God's kingdom and that we are new people, not new people's army, new people born again into His kingdom. <clears throat> Do you always say, I'm born again? <laughs> or even your workmen don't know that you're a Christian or born again. It tells us of our purpose for living. Did you say amen? amen? It tells us the philosophy of our behavior. You know, our belief. That's why there is a correlation correlation between your belief and your behavior. Your behavior does tell what your belief is. Apostle Paul said, if I have to forgive others who have offended or wronged me, it is because God has first forgiven me of all my sins. If I have to stay put and do my part in the ministry, it is because I am part of the body which has many parts, and I am one of them. In the spiritual fight, it is not just being called hidden, it is being right hidden. Six, sword of the spirit. It is a provision for offensive use. It is heavy and long, but the effective use of it, it comes from a long, from a long and exhaustive practice. Correct? I think some of you who, have, who knows how to use the harness. Harness by you, chakul? Okay. So you need to have a practice, or else, while you are practicing, sometimes you hit your head. Now, its maintenance comes from mastery of every part of it. It needs to be cleaned. You know, if you have the tool, it needs to be cleaned. It needs to be sharpened all the time, ready for the evil day. You cannot say, wait a minute, devil, my sword is very makurul, dull. I'm going to sharpen it. You know, the devil will just slap you. They say, you're, you're not prepared. The Word of God is our offensive weapon. We need to master it. We need to memorize it. We need to meditate on it. So when the evil day comes, it can handle as they said. You know, the verse in the scripture it just pop up in our minds and then it touches our heart and we are going to stand in conviction on that because we are living by faith in His Word. In the Word, it is our spiritual food. Number seven. Praying in the Spirit with all kinds of prayers. I think in prayer, praying, it uh, tells us about being alert, isn't it? Many believers are falling into the schemes and trap of the enemy because they only know one kind of prayer. Because in prayer, it is to synonymous to asking. Now, in that passage, you will be able to find a Apostle Paul saying, pray in the Spirit on all occasions. When you read that passage, with all kinds of prayers, there are three alls mentioned there. What are those all? Verse 17 or 18 from the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Come on, guys. What are those all? 18. And pray in the Spirit, he said, on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. And with this in mind, we are not and we keep on praying for all the saints. When I said praying in the Spirit is not just praying for our needs. It's praying for others as well. Now what are those kinds of prayers? What are the kinds of prayers we know? I was just asking? Request? Or there is what we call a prayer of praise. A prayer of adoration. (coughs) 
The devil will keep our minds blank, times and empty on the blessings of God, so we will live in discontentment. So we go to church not prepared for worship because my you my doing anything. All our our minds are filled with the troubles. Then we'll move on to complain, then become critical, and ultimately we do not praise and worship God, which is the goal of our life. And the goal of the enemy in the very beginning is to get the worship from God. He wants to get the worship that God deserves. And that is what it is in the temptation. If you worship me, I will give you this. Now we need to know how open, how to open and find where are the thinnest of our faith. I think we as believers, when we know we are saved, we should go beyond John 3, 16. What is John 3, 16? Uh, Jesus loves me. <laughs> we, need, we need to know. We need to know that there's a verse that we're given of our sins. We need to know about the grace of God that has been showered by God upon us. We need the scriptural conditions of being saved, living sanctified, and the hope that Jesus is coming again and the power of his resurrection. We need to memorize the verse that we are standing on that we have been forgiven on our sins so we have the basis of forgiving others. We need to know the assuring promises that we are blessed because we are God's children. Sometimes we again say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, but are you really blessed? I don't know. From the word of God comes the knowledge of our inheritance and blessings in Christ. Can you say amen? amen. We can enjoy what we don't know. In fact, it is a jeopardy to live without being blessed. When, in fact, we are peoples of Christ, and we are blessed. Our common problem today, we are Christian believers who do not pull up our sword. What is our sword? The Bible, the Word of God. Except on Sunday. We only read the scripture at the time of the scripture reading. And that is sad. No wonder we don't remember any verse. Well, after all, why are we going to remember the verse when you the iPad is so easy? Just punching. The iPad has a good memory, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so no wonder you are the victim. They forgot to pull out the sword, which is the Bible. They forget to confess that it is the word of God and it is the weapon. They do not remember to wear out the helmet of salvation, except when they are in accidents. Say, Lord, save me. <laughs> now, I just mentioned the full armor that we need to work out in living in the combat zone. You know, to work those out in order to just easy for you to move, you know, and fight. Because if you are hard up in carrying all those armor, how could you fight to win? In fact, how could you share the gospel when in fact you are not clear about being saved? Just as the soldiers need a daily routine of work out. Say, work out. Even so, we Christian believers need a daily workout of our faith in Christ. I need to hear a loud amen. 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 Work out with your minds memorizing. Work out with your minds knowing where is the book of Daniel. And I think I know it's in the New Testament. <laughs> He said, Blessed is the man who walked not in the council of the godly. Where is that pastor? Is it in James? <laughs> I said, We should be more than that man. How many books are in the Bible? 99. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the verse that 1966. <laughs> I remember when I was high school. 
What do you call that? Gun, we call it grunge. What's that? M. Okay, I'm not expert on that, but that's where I came. And the tactical inspection. Uh, you know those four guys standing before the battalion commander? Okay. I was the number one there standing. Okay. I was assigned during the uh, tactical inspection. I was the one assigned to dismantle the ground. <laughs> For me, because I was not instructed so well that I have to memorize every part of it and know very well how to dismantle it and then put it back in a short period of time. I was assigned, you know what? I was sweating. I was trembling. When the inspector came and asked me what part is this small thing, I don't know. It was a pin. <laughs> so how could I win without knowing the part? If it requires a short time to assemble it before I get to shoot the enemy, how could I do it without being trained? You know, the enemy is a skimmer. It doesn't come at times at times that you are prepared. <laughs> are you with me? Yes. Sometimes he comes at the time when you are insane. When you are lack of reason. So easy for him to just wait. You know what? You are going to be expert on those seven armor that God has provided. They are not heavy. It only requires practice. You will become a winner. Could you leave your Bible with me? I'm a winner. I'm a winner. Convince yourself, I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a child of God. I'm a victor. Would you say Amen. amen. I would like you to do that standing. Amen. I will declare and say, God, I'm blessed with so many blessings. Wow. Wonderful. Praise God.